Morning and the Women of Monyele Group, which means women are struggling, come together for their daily meeting. These women live in Languri Central Village, Uwaya Parish, Acheba Sub-County in Lamore District. This is grace is from mobilizing some women, at least for them to come and gather themselves together because she wants to give them some good information about family planning. The women discuss how to overcome everyday challenges of life. Should I continue with the implants or should I change? Because I am experiencing pain in the West and sometimes I bleed. They also discuss family planning and contraceptives. Although all of them are using a modern contraceptive method, their husbands are not aware of the fact but you know, women always, they have problem with their husband. Mostly they choose without their husband knowing because of the problem they are facing from home. After I gave birth, I began using injectables. I used to bleed a lot for three years and then I got a miscarriage. Now I am using implants and I do not have any side effects. At 25%, the modern contraceptive prevalence rate, MCPR, in Lamor district is low. Grace Abalo, a village health worker with Health Rights International and International Rescue Committee, offers the women advice. At 52, she is a single mother of six. Every day, she rides around Acheba Sub County, talking to women about family planning. In the course of her work, she has helped over 600 women make a choice to use contraceptive. However, she says sometimes health workers fail her efforts when they don't have time to advise the women she sends to health facilities. The side effects of the family planning on bleeding is a lot in the community. I'm giving them to their information very well, but I know the problem, surely it is with the health workers. Because if I've talked with the community, reaching you, you also need to tell them more information than me. Acheba Sub County has three parishes and 20 villages. Most of the women using modern contraceptives get services from Padibe West Health Center 3. On antenatal days, the midwife, Sijelia Akidi, gives health talks to her clients. But any kawake recompete le gone mer inde bet mo apa wan ti ko ba eni do kui pe ye ba do fi ni kui pe ye pe eni ka eni ke recommend ba de eni ni ki ngolo den yam ba de eni ni she says the challenge of managing side effects is fueling a rise in myths they don't want anything to touch them now because they already have family planning on them if somebody feel a day even if it is malaria somebody may think ah it is this method that is causing all these things. Of course, it was not very easy for me to really manage other side effects. Eh? Because sometimes, like, if you come with heavy bleeding, we really give this minor, minor treatment. But to go into detail, you might not know. Eh? So we manage them with those small, small drugs, all the knowledge we have. Eh? About 400 kilometers away in Zombo district, 52-year-old Emanuela Olyera, a peasant farmer in Alangi sub-county, has used family planning to space her seven children. Her firstborn is 30 years old and her lastborn is 13 years old. My husband was not supportive and I had to bear the burden of the children alone. So I began using family planning. Up to now, he doesn't know that I use it. Last month, Olyera underwent a tubal ligation procedure where her fallopian tubes were cut and tied to prevent pregnancy. As I speak now, I have done tubal ligation 
without the knowledge of my husband. I had no fear. However, I am afraid to advise my friends to use permanent family planning methods because it might bring problems in their homes. In November 2019, during the Nairobi Summit on ICPD 25, Uganda recommitted to continue promoting universal access to all methods of family planning and to reduce the unmet need for family planning from 28% to 10% by 2022 and to increase the modern contraceptive prevalence rate MCPR among all women to 50% by 2022. The government further committed to allocate 5 million US dollars annually for procurement and distribution of reproductive and family planning supplies and commodities to the last mile. In 2021, to ensure commodity security, the Ministry of Health instituted the One Facility, One Warehouse Guideline to streamline the flow of reproductive health and family planning commodities. Stakeholders say because of the guidelines, stockouts of family planning commodities have been greatly reduced. We know when a client walks in and he doesn't get the method, that is already what? A gap. So where we see the level of the commodities going down, we place timely orders for the commodities in case the orders delay to reach us. Sometimes we run around and borrow from our, our neighboring facilities to make sure we have the commodities within. And also at the district, they also make sure they have what we call a buffer stock so that when we run around and we don't have, we are able to pick from them. However, for a month now, Lamore District is grappling with a shortage of implant on a long-term contraceptive, Turkish or Roma. The assistant district health officer blames this shortage on negligence. She says only 5% of the district's budget is allocated to family planning and as a result, sometimes there's no fuel to transport commodities from the district store to health facilities. We have a center three and four, which always order, and some health center twos. So we order according to the need. Where there is a gap, we redistribute. If we see that the redistribution is not enough, we place an emergency order through the joint medical store. The challenge would come maybe if the district does not have fuel to support the redistribution. Commodity security should ideally translate into high uptake of family planning. However, at 30%, Uganda's family planning uptake is still the lowest in the East African region and stakeholders are now focusing on raising demand for family planning. At the 2019 Nairobi Summit, Uganda committed to annually allocate at least 10% of our maternal and child health resources to adolescent-friendly reproductive health services. However, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the numbers of teenage pregnancy rose exponentially, showing that teenagers and adolescents, especially in the rural areas, did not know their sexual reproductive health rights. Cosmos Omirambe, the program's manager of Zombo Rural Development Network Association, Zorodena, says the focus of his organization is to attract young people to health centers to receive family planning information and services. We were tasked to come up with that advocacy strategy, of which our Zorodena was to that the office of the DHO uh, uh, should reach out the cow to issue a satchel to all the public health facilities to gazette at least one day for adolescents to access youth-friendly services, which was done. And now when the adolescents come to these particular services, there are no specific place gazetted for them to, act, to come, like to stay in in form of youth resource center or youth corners within the facilities. Like we're having nine health centers, three in the district, 
but none of them have a specific a gazetted place for the young people so that's a challenge and also EIC materials because now on these days if may if they as they come to the facilities if there were information EIC is uh, having different information about family planning about SRH it would really be good for them to see because some, some of our young people cannot read but it was just looking at the pictures we also communicate something to them but they are not there On the other hand, Pamoja Action for Integrated Regional Development, or PAIRD, a community-based organization in Pakwach district, is championing uptake through dialogue meetings with couples. The dialogue meetings have been very crucial in driving demand for family planning contraceptives. Because in that way, men who have been barriers to women in terms of accessing family planning uh, services get to, got to understand very well why they need such services and the importance, the benefits that they can realize out of it. And by doing so, we were also able to prevent uh, gender-based violence, which is sometimes a consequence of using a family planning method for a rural woman. Since family planning has been introduced, we, the Kabo, embrace it. Reason one, this issue of education is very expensive. The health management of the child, likely now, when you only a mere wife produces you over 12 children, then there is the problem of land fragmentation. The major point why I embrace the family planning project is unfairly learned. The cost of only raising one child from birth to university is too expensive. Should we continue overbearing, then there shall be a lot of burden both to the community, to the local government, the district and central government within this month have been moving up and down because we cannot leave, I cannot leave my people backward. We are sensitizing our people, informing some of the husbands who are coercive because there are certain men who go as far as having gender-based violence so the best medicine is now our women also to embrace the family planning. Nibu <laughs> Mark, <laughs> While creating demand is the objective, there are still challenges in service provision. Lucy Lanyero is a 35-year-old tailor in Languri Central Village in Lamore District. Lanyero is a mother of five and since 2014 has been using injectables. I used that one from 2.9, 2.10, 2.11. Then I, I stopped. From there, Again, I gave birth to one child. 
Then from 2013, I started again that injection from 2014, when my child was one year. And by then I had no problem completely. However, in February this year, she began bleeding after the contraceptive was administered. Then 220, that is when I started experiencing some problem. Myself pouring water. A friend advised her to change to an intrauterine device, IUD, and the device was inserted into her body at Paddy Bay West Health Center 3. So from that month to March until June, I did not have any peace. Blood increase and even water. And my stomach pains a lot. I went back to them for in case for them to remove. They looked for it and they did not find it. Four months later at St. Mary's Hospital La Cho, Lanyero was advised to have an operation to remove her uterus. When the ultrasound, they, they, the ulcer screening, they did it. it was, they saying that eh, I had some problem in the stomach, and the result was like I have the ovarian cyst, and the second result is saying that eh, the cervic, the cervical mass, and again the third one, they are saying that that thing has developed the cystis. So I don't know the meaning of all those things. And I, would, I was advised from Lacho to go for operation and they should remove all the uterus and they did it. When my husband heard of that, he collected any of his things and left. And I came, I'm alone with the children, just like that. The way I feel myself, it is not the family planning who brought that. I had my own problem already, but their problem was like they could have not do if they know that I have a problem. They, sh they, they, they what they should do, they were, they were supposed to first of all to clear the problem I have, so then we, they can advise me to use that one after. Taki Shorama, the assistant district health officer for Lamoua district, insists that health workers in the district routinely attend refresher trainings on family planning service provision. We have this uh, counseling, provision of modern contraceptives, management of side effects. So all our health workers have been trained on that. We have got a refresher trainings with support from partners like UNFPA, we su uh, supported uh, Maristop, which has conducted training, especially for long term and short term. And then uh, continuous mentorship, they also conducted. The training gaps among service providers have led to an information lacuna, which is being filled by friends and relatives. My going there, I always go there, when I've already got the information from someone, you go for the IUD, you go for the implant, you go for the injection. So I was going there when you tell the L worker that I've come for the IUD. Instead, they don't ask you so much and they did not ask you to do anything. They just take you direct inside and give the injections. Monica Atimango, a peasant farmer and mother of three in Pakwach district, used to use modern contraceptive methods. But later, her friend advised her to return to traditional family planning. I was using oral pills, but one day I forgot to take them and I conceived. I did not want to get pregnant at that time. A friend advised me to put my menstrual blood in a bottle and hide it in a suitcase. Three years after I had the baby, I removed the bottle and conceived again. Now, my husband does not want any more children, so I have kept my menstrual blood in a bottle in a suitcase.
At 35, Irene Pamu has five children. She uses antibiotics as a birth control method. I started with oral pills, but I used to get side effects like heartburn. I moved to injectables, but I used to get my periods twice a month. I went to the hospital to talk to the midwife, but while I was there, I met a friend who advised me to use Fragile and Cipro. I take the two drugs after having sex. I have used the combination for seven years now. Dr. Kenneth Buyinza, the National Coordinator of Uganda Family Planning Consortium, UFPC, says limitations of skills and knowledge among service providers is common. In a facility like a health center 3 or health center 4 facility, um, you will train maybe 3, 4 uh, people and then at the end of it all, remember transfers are a normal uh, process. Some of them are keep being transferred, some of them leave for further training, some of them leave for winter pastures and new recruitments are happening. So it is a matter of uh, you know, putting in place uh, a continuous professional development program. It is something we also need to, uh, to escalate that level, uh, National Curriculum Development Center, to be able to reflect on the training content. We are in advanced stages of producing a revised or updated curriculum for the National Family Planning Training Curriculum. Implementing partners also say poor management of side effects by service providers is a barrier to contraceptive uptake. But here you find it is try and error. You first try this. If the side effect is too much for you, then we are going to remove it. Maybe, uh, yeah, we are going to remove it, then you try the other one of which it is sometimes discourages the, the mothers. Because when I get too much of the side effect, the next time I will not go back for it. Side effect management is extremely important in delivering contraceptives. A woman who is dissatisfied with a contraceptive will sound more convincing than the one who is satisfied with it. As such, it is very important for family planning service providers to pay keen attention to side effect management. Good quality counseling should be able to uh, walk through uh, this woman uh, to give her comprehensive information, including being able to know, together with the service provider, they should be able to know which kind of method would best suit her. When a woman chooses a method of family planning that is out of informed choice making, she's most likely to contend with it. The perennial shortage of manpower in health centers is also detrimental to the increase in uptake. Sometimes you find only one midwife is on duty, is supposed to attend for antenatal. She's also needed for delivery. She's also needed at family planning department. So she gets very little time to what? To psychoeducate psycho these mothers on the side effect, on ABCD, which type? At the end of it all, when we triage, you find that they come with, they get their level of prioritization, you know, the first. So you, someone would look at it, most of the midwives would prefer, they would prioritize a pregnant woman who is attending ANC, or a pregnant woman who is being admitted in labor, uh, to uh, the other one who has come from a family planning method. And unfortunately, when that person or that woman or girl misses that day, that appointment, and goes back home, she may never come back again. She may come back maybe in a, for ANC when she's pregnant. So the way forward is beyond uh, us as the district. Uh, I cannot say anything about it, because whatever we complain, they will just say a limited uh, waste bill. So meaning it is the government of Uganda to do something about it to revise the staffing norms. It is clear that a lot more needs to be done if Uganda is to meet its family planning commitments. Providing family planning contraceptives yields best when it is an outreach. In an outreach 
you are going into the community and taking the service closer to the women who need it. Rather than delivering these services through the health facilities. I already mentioned earlier that we have challenges of transport. There are women who live more than a kilometer away from the health facilities that we have. Therefore, they'll find it very difficult, even if you're providing these services free of charge, however good these services are, if they are, the services are too far away from them, they may not come for it. The castle leaders, the what? Religious leaders and then opinion leaders. We have to get a way of supporting them to facilitate them to do their work. Remember, we have just trained them and we, they need to be supported and work inclusive to, with them so that they know exactly the nitty gritty uh, to be done. In a call to action, Dr. Buyinza says family planning is a critical development issue that all development partners in sexual and reproductive health need to invest in, especially in outreach programs to bring more rural people on board. So we are looking at uh, identifying and bring on board as many grassroots organizations as possible and building their capacities to be able to, to act as a strong link between these high-level, national-level uh, networks and the, the communities. Because those grassroots organizations, they are established and operate within these communities. They understand the community dynamics much, much, much better than any other person. And therefore, those kind of institutions, investing in them, uh, supporting them, can go a long way in addressing the social behavior change issues but as well as also acting as a strong link between, referral link between the communities and the points of service delivery. The government of Uganda committed to improving family planning commodity security and the quality of family planning counseling. To this end, the government should be accountable to its citizens by voluntarily reporting on its progress, working towards achieving those commitments with the goal of increasing the uptake of family planning.